Papilledema is swelling of the optic nerves secondary to raised intracranial pressure. Therefore, in any patient who has worrisome headaches, it's important to examine the ocular fundus looking for papilledema. Depending on the duration of the pathology which has caused the raised intracranial pressure, papilledema can go through various stages. The earliest stage can be quite subtle and difficult to pick up. It involves subtle swelling of the optic disc margins, mostly where the nerve fibre layer is thickest. So to start with, this is superiorly and inferiorly, and then later, nasally. As papilledema becomes more established, the swelling can progress circumferentially around the optic nerve, leading to a blurring of the optic disc margins. Established papilledema is associated with hemorrhages on the optic nerve head and also around the optic nerve head, and in addition, the central vessels on the optic nerve can become obscured as the tissue swells around them. Chronic papilledema is where the optic nerve is still swollen, but also the disc appears pale, due to loss of nerve fibre layer tissue. And then we go on to the end stage of papilledema, which is called atrophic papilledema. At this stage, the optic nerve head is pale, but is also flat due to the degree of neural tissue loss. Other important features of papilledema, including the fact that it can be asymmetrical, which is why it's important to examine both eyes. And also in chronic or severe swelling, you can get associated protein deposits in the macula beside the disc, telling you that the papilledema has been there for a significant length of time. The most worrisome symptom associated with papilledema is headaches, particularly worrisome headaches. With regards to visual symptoms, there are remarkably few until papilledema becomes established. At that point, the patient may report episodes of transient visual loss. These can last from a few minutes to a few seconds and can involve greying out of the vision or positive visual phenomena such as bright flashing lights. After each attack, the vision should recover completely um, and they can be precipitated by moving from a sitting to a standing position. It is only when the papilledema becomes end stage or atrophic that the patient will then be aware of visual symptoms such as visual blurring and or loss of visual field. The main group of conditions that can mimic papilledema are the anatomical variants of a normal optic nerve. These would include disc drusen and the crowded optic nerve, which can be found in patients who are long-sighted. However, because both these conditions are just anatomical variants, they should not be associated with headache. Conditions causing inflammation of the optic nerve can also cause a papillitis or inflammatory swelling of the optic nerve, but these conditions affect vision early, unlike papilledema. It has been suggested that pulsation of the vein on the surface of the optic disc can be used as a surrogate marker for normal intracranial pressure. Although this is sometimes true, this sign should not be used to differentiate papilledema from other causes of anomalous appearing optic nerve heads.